He had a dream to be a pilot and he grew up to become one of the greatest pilot officers in the Ghana Air Force. He attempted coup three times, failing his first attempt and being imprisoned and sentenced to death. For the first time in Ghana, a group of junior army officers had attempted to pull down a military regime made up of senior army officers. While waiting for his execution, he was broken out of prison to lead a coup and became president of Ghana. He is the longest serving president of the Republic of Ghana after leading the country for nearly 20 years. Stay tuned for yet another inspirational story of a great African leader. Welcome to African Dream Motivation. Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins was born on 22nd June 1947 in Accra, Ghana. He was born to a Ghanaian woman by name Victoria Agbutui and Ewe, and James Ramsey John, a Scottish who was a chemist by profession. His parents were educated and saw the need to ensure Jerry had a better education. When he was young, all he ever wanted to be in the future was a pilot, and no matter how much he was silenced, he never gave up on his dream. He later recalled that one day, while a child, he was asked what he wanted to be in the future. Standing next to his mother, he answered, I want to be a pilot. Unexpectedly, his mother slapped him very hard, saying he will be a doctor or a scientist. He felt so bad, but that didn't change his focus. After completing his basic education, he continued his secondary level tutoring at Achimota School. Achimota is one of the greatest schools in Africa, having produced great African leaders including Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of the Republic of Ghana, Kojo Busio, the first Minister of Education of Ghana, Robert Mugabe, President of Zimbabwe, and his wife, Sally Mugabe, Edward Ekufu Ado, former President of the Second Republic of Ghana, Alaji Sedauda Jawara, first Head of State of the Gambia, and many great African leaders. It was time for another hero to be produced, and gradually, Jerry John Rollins was becoming one of these greats. At Achimota, he met his future wife, Nana Kunedu, who happened to also be at the school. Life took them on a different path, and as Kunedu continued his academic pathway by enrolling in the London College of Arts, Jerry pursued his military career. He completed his secondary school in 1967 and joined the Ghana Armed Forces shortly afterwards. He graduated from the Armed Forces in January 1969 and was commissioned as a pilot officer. It was a dream come true and nothing could stop him from reaching his full potentials. He won the Speedbird Trophy confirming him as the best cadet to fly the Su-7 Grand Attack supersonic jet aircraft as he was killed in aerobatics. As the saying goes, behind every great man is a great woman. The perseverance story of Jerry John Rollins cannot be pinpointed without his loving wife. In 1977, he married Nana Kunedu, whom he met in his early days at Achimota School and had their first daughter a year later. Due to his hard work and perseverance, he earned the rank of flight lieutenant in April 1978. Rising through the ranks, he was part of the Free Africa Movement, 
an underground movement of military officers who wanted to unify Africa through a series of coups. He grew discontent with the military government led by Ignatius Kutu Echampong, who seized power through a coup in January 1972. Echampong's government was accused of encouraging and practicing corruption. He was also criticized for his overdependence on pre-colonial powers, which was believed to have led to the decline of the economy. All these factors inspired Jerry John Rawlings to think of attempting a coup for the first time. A champion government was short-lived after General Fred Ekufu staged a coup and took over the government in 1978. On 15 May 1979, Exactly a month and a week to civilian elections, Rawlings, together with six other soldiers, staged a coup against the government of General Fred Kufu. But unfortunately for him, it was unsuccessful. They were arrested and sentenced to death in a general court martial. It was indeed a trying moment for him. Even though it looked like there was no way out of such a situation, his justification statements on social injustice at his trial fell on the hearts of the people, winning him civilian sympathy. It seemed like the end of the road for a man full of great vision. While he awaited his execution, a group of soldiers broke him out of custody and from there, they embarked on another coup and this time it was successful. He overthrew the Supreme Military Council and in a blink of an eye, the prisoner awaiting his execution became President of the Republic of Ghana. Shortly after he assumed power, he established the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, which comprised of a 15-member junior officers and he became the chairman. He only ruled for 112 days, which saw a massive prosecutions and executions of former heads of states and top government officials. They were believed to have been involved in corruption and other crimes against the progress of the country. Right after the coup, elections were held and the leading contestant, Hela Liman, whose ideologies attracted supporters of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, won. On 24 September 1979, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings peacefully handed over power to Hila Liman, whose People's National Party had won the election. Rawlings stood aside and monitored from afar how the country was run under Hila Liman. After two years, Rawlings claimed that the civilian government was too weak and if something is not done, the deteriorating economy will get worse. On 31st December 1981, Rawlings made his third coup attempt and he successfully overthrew Hila Liman from government. He established the Provisional National Defense Council PNDC, military junta as the official government. Even though he desired to eliminate corruption and overdependency on colonial masters, his policies were still not enough to hold the deteriorating economy of Ghana. This led to serious crisis, especially during 1983, forcing him to undertake structural adjustment and submit himself to election to retain power. This new route led Ghana back to multi-party democracy. A new constitution was drafted in 1992 and a ban on political parties were lifted after it was approved by a referendum. On 3rd November 1992, the NDC led by JJ Rawlings won the election by 60% of total votes. In 1996, another election was held and despite the amalgamation and alliance of opposition parties to form the new patriotic party led by J. A. Kufo, Rawlings again won the seat by 
what we've been embarking on over the last few years for us are just as important today as they were in the past. And we won't be pursuing the same policies. And uh, I can only hope that those who are opposed to us will wake up to the reality that, look, I mean, we have good intentions for this country, and they've always been welcome, and they will always be welcome to join in the development of the nation. Rawlings ended the second term of his democratic government peacefully, and his vice president, Professor John Fifiata Mills, contested with John Ajekunkufo of the NPP in 2001. The NDC lost, and a new president was elected as the second in the Fourth Republic of Ghana. Many people feared Rawlings might not leave power, but he accepted the results and handed over. He gained the respect of many heads of states and international bodies for allowing a smooth transition of power to an opposition. He is Ghana's longest serving president after being in power for 19 years, 119 days in both military and democratic rulings. After his heroic handover, he continued serving Africa in diverse ways. He worked with the United Nations to promote African unity and stability and also attended conferences to promote volunteerism. In October 2010, he was named the African Union Envoy to Somalia. He was also the chairman of the Thomas Sankara Memorial Committee. He delivered lectures at universities around the world. Notable of them was at Oxford University in England. After the death of Zimbabwe's longest serving president, Robert Mugabe, he led a delegation on behalf of the Ghanaian president, Nana Ekufuado, to the funeral. He was always available to contribute his best to the growth of Africa. On 24th September 2020, Rollins received the bad news about the passing of his mother. He was saddened by such an unexpected happening, but he remained strong and went through with the burial ceremony successfully. Nearly two months later, it was reported that Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins himself had also passed on at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital on 12 November 2020 after being admitted for a short-term illness. It was a shocking news and many people couldn't believe what they were hearing. President Ekufuado officially confirmed the sad news and declared a seven-day period of mourning. A great son of Africa had fallen and it was a sad moment for Africa. All election rallies and campaigns were halted by both his political party and opposition parties. His funeral ceremony was held from 24th January to 27th January 2021 in Accra. His body was laid in state at the Accra International Conference Center from 25th to 26th January 2021. A state funeral followed on 27th January 2021 at the Black Star Square after which his burial service was held at the military cemetery at Bema Camp. Full military honors were observed, including the sounding of last post by army bugles and a 21-gun salute. The funeral ceremony was attended by many dignitaries from around the world, including the President of Liberia, George Maneria, the President of Sierra Leone, Dr. Julius Mada Bio, former President of Benin, Thomas Boni, the President of the ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Jean Claude Cassibru, and many others. Back in July 1984, he was honored by Cuban President Fidel Castro with the order of Jose Marti, recognizing his selflessness in leading a great revolution to transform Ghana. In 1993, he was awarded a cash prize of $50,000 for his outstanding efforts to fight hunger from the early 1980s to the early 1990s. 
He used the money to sponsor the establishment of the University of Development Studies, which became the first university in the three northern regions of Ghana. In 2013, the university revered on him an honorary degree, Doctorate of Letters, for his contribution to the development of Ghana. During his funeral ceremony, the president of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa, proposed the change of name of the university from University of Development Studies to Dejeri John Rawlings University of Development Studies. He saw himself as a pilot right from childhood and worked hard towards it to make his dream a reality. His journey to success had been out of courage and perseverance through and through. He was a man who did what needed to be done for the greater good of Ghana and Africa. His selflessness, perseverance, and strong will makes him one of the greatest African leaders who ever lived. Even though he's not with us today, his legacy will continue to live among us.